Mark Simone. On the voice of New York. 710 WOR. Well, Ann Coulter, of course, the best-selling author. Uh, her latest book, Resistance is Futile, but if you're looking for stuff to read while you're locked up, a lot of great Ann Coulter books. You know, you, she's got a brand new website, too. You should check this out. It's excellent. It's got uh, all kinds of uh, video, audio, books, everything. AnnCoulter.com. Uh, and follow her on Twitter, Ann Coulter at Twitter. Lots of great tweets. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Great. How are you, Mark Simone? Enjoying the shutdown? No. <laughs> It's too much. It's too long. I can't do this anymore. I know, anymore. and it's getting to be too stupid. I just tweeted, um, I mean, there have already been 17 studies showing this, but now there's an all-new study out of Japan showing that there's an 18.7 times greater chance of transmission of COVID-19 indoors than outdoors. Yes. Think of that, 18.7 times. I mean, not twice as as likely, not 10 times as likely, 18.5. So the, the chance of getting this out of doors is virtually nil, and yet every time I turn on MSNBC, these young, healthy anchors are standing out by a beach wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, would you agree with me that these uh, Democratic politicians, governors, uh, and the uh, fake news crowd, although they'll go on and on about the death numbers, they should never show any empathy at all for the 30 million lives that have been destroyed by this? Where's that chart? Uh, how about flattening that curve? Yes, and I, I, I also just tweeted this thread from um, a Canadian politician talking about her mother in a nursing home. And they're the ones I'm really feeling sorry for right now. I mean, these 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 old folks um, who are, are are basically in prison now. They can't see anyone, and people are all tweeting about this is so sad. Mommy can't use use Skype. She's she's confused by Facebook. We can't even go visit her. Um, as I have said from the beginning, um, that's what we really need to be concentrating on: the nursing homes, both keeping them safe, but also keeping them happy. Um, this is really a cruel way to treat old people to lock them away like that, um, instead of having you know idiot young people out in Central Park wearing masks. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, the whole thing is so ridiculous, this uh, idea. And you hear Mayor de Blasio say, well, we may have to lock down the city a couple more months. It wouldn't be here in a couple more months. What are oh, we Oh, I'm already very worried about what's going to happen. Um, no, it's, um, it's interesting. You talk to people um, who know anything <laughs> about, about private enterprise, um, and they're hardly being cavalier. I mean, a lot of them have have elderly parents themselves. Of course, we need to protect the vulnerable. Um, in fact, my side seems to be the only side that ever ever does care about keeping people alive. Um, but but you're really you're you're destroying that city. Restaurants are going to be gone, and they're never going to come back. Not to mention stores. Uh, Broadway is one of the most important industries oh, in yeah. New York. Professional uh, sports. No, it's really, it's not, these, these people who are always haranguing us, you know, believe the science. They're absolutely refusing to believe the science. We do know, uh, we don't know, you know, how it's transmitted. We don't have the vaccine yet. But we do know two very crucial facts about this Wuhan virus. And one is um, it, it overwhelmingly kills those over 70 and with, with three comorbidities, as they, as they say, other conditions. Um, more than 90% of the dead in New York City, the epicenter um, of this, of this, this, vi this pandemic, um, more than 90% had at least one other condition, um, usually either, um, well, hypertension, diabetes, or obesity. More than 90%, 88% had two co comorbidities, 80% were over the age of 70. So that's what you really need to be concentrating on. And then the second important fact we know is, is that it's basically not transmissible outside. The government is doing exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. There's suddenly all these police forces that, <laughs> that were unable to, at least in places like California, not so much New York, except maybe under Mayor de Blasio. Oh, no, we just, we just don't have the manpower to be running down um, mere armed robbers. <laughs> suddenly, I mean, it's really shocking, these stories of, 
of people being prosecuted for cutting hair in their homes, um, um, opening store, going to parks, playing t-ball with their daughters in a park. Suddenly, we got you know the SWAT team there. Um, <laughs> it's really pretty disgusting, and you see, you see, boy, give the give the government certain certain members of the government a little bit of power, and they turn into fascists overnight. Hey, uh, Ann Coulter, have you been watching the situation in Florida? Because when that started, everybody said, that's going to be the epicenter. It's going to explode. And why didn't it? <laughs> I know. I know. Well, there are a lot of things that you would think would make Florida particularly vulnerable. Um, there are pockets of, of old people in Florida. It's a very, very popular place for retirement. You had all these cruise ships landing. Yeah. Um, but, but no, no, you haven't seen an explosion at all. There, the, the media does not, does not seem to want to broadcast that. I mean, my, my, my only hope at this point, because it's, it's all looking pretty bleak in terms of what's going to happen to this country. The media are fine to, uh, and Democrats to burn the country down. As long as they think that gives them a slight leg up on this on this upcoming election, as long as they can get rid of the horrible Donald Trump, um, um, but we really aren't seeing. I, 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 my, I think in these like half dozen states that have started to open, um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of deaths outside of what's expected. People who are already sick, and I think as more, it's going to be hard to hide that as these dozen states, like Florida, like Georgia, they've opened up, um, and if we don't have a death spiral. What is going to be the excuse for other states not opening up? It hasn't happened, um, though admittedly the media will be trying to hide that. It was hilarious. I noticed they um, <laughs> some of the reports, because some of the states like Georgia um, have, have just reopened, and, and the news report will be, and the next day 200 people <laughs> died. Do they understand how this disease works? <laughs> the people who died have been sick for a few weeks now. Yeah, it's a lagging number. Uh, but some politics, even Chris Christie came right out and said it. You know, you can't let everybody do everything and everybody dies, but you can't lock up everybody forever. He said you're going to have to find somewhere in the middle and settle on that. Uh, and he just came out and said he might have to have a little increase in these numbers, but you can't destroy everybody's lives. 30 million people can't be out of work. You can't do that. Well, yes, and not only do we do we have a a path forward outdoors, protect the vulnerable, um, which luckily, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't think we should lock them away and torture these old people in nursing homes, which seems to be our position right now. Um, but 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 by and large, people seventy and older aren't aren't in the workforce anymore. It wouldn't have to destroy the economy. Um, as for outdoors, well, warm weather is coming. Um, um, restaurants, stores, they could do a lot more on sidewalks, have outdoor seating. There are ways to go forward and still be safe. Um, and the other, the other argument for doing that is, as Anthony Fauci and others keep saying, oh, we're going to have a second wave, a second wave. Well, there is the, the Sweden model, and that is the assumption that there are going to be a certain number de of deaths overall. Um, the whole their argument to us for for locking us away for what was supposed to be two weeks and has now grown into six weeks was we have to flatten the curve because otherwise the hospitals will be overwhelmed. Well, okay, the hospitals aren't overwhelmed. We flattened it. Hospitals are ready. <laughs> They're half empty. So they've changed the argument for all of us staying home now. It used to be we have to protect the hospitals. Now it's just I don't know, just this general thing. No one can ever go out. No one can ever get it well how about be like sweden and have maybe a few more illnesses um i mean it's not it's not um it's not like the plague in sweden but they're getting it all out of the way early and developing herd Im immunity yeah that, even chris christie came right out and said it yesterday uh well everybody hey your new website is great a lot of stuff up there uh, uh video audio all kinds of and coulter.com the new website Excellent. Thank you. It is good, isn't it? I, I moved up from the 1950s website. Yeah, everybody go take a look at it, AnnCoulter.com. Make sure you follow her on Twitter. A lot of great tweets. And if you're looking for more stuff to read, uh, her current book, Resistance is Futile, but any of her books from uh, any time are all great, uh, great things to read. Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. All right, take care.